Good afternoon. This afternoon we're going to look at whether or not a series converges using the alternating series test. Um, this is probably the easiest of test, um, other than well, it's interim test because you have to use the interim test to do it as well. So we're going to look at two things to see if an alternating series converges or diverges, and then we're going to look to see if it converges conditionally or absolutely. This is in your notes on page 10 at the bottom of, of the page. So basically, an alternating series is where we have some part of the series that's causing it to go between negative 1 and 1. And in this case, it's this. So negative 1 to the n and negative 1 to the n plus 1, both of these will cause this to alternate. Why is this? Because if n, so here n is starting at n equals 1. So if n is equal to 1, then we have negative 1 to the first power, a to the n. And if n is equal to 2, we have negative 1 to the second power, a sub n. If n is equal to 3, we have negative 1 cubed, a but then, and then for the last one, I'm just going to do n equals 4, but we know that this would continue on forever. Now, notice what's happening here. In this first situation, we get negative 1 a n. Then we get positive 1 a sub n, negative 1 a sub n, positive 1 a sub n. So we see that a sub n is bouncing back and forth between positive and negative negative and positive, positive and negative. And because it's ba bouncing back and forth, this is what makes it alternating. Alternating just, just means that it's going from positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative. So this is what causes this to alternate. So if this alternates, then we can look at two conditions to determine if it converges. First, the nth term test. We ignore, we ignore the alternating part and just look at a sub n. If the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is 0, then it converges. And also, we also have to look at the second part and make sure that the terms are decreasing, that the second term is smaller than the first term, the third term is smaller than the second term. So each term is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. If that is the case, if these two conditions are met, then the series is said to converge. Let's do the examples on the bottom of page 10. So the first thing we always want to check is, so we see that this is alternating. So this makes this alternate. We ignore, so once we recognize it's alternating, we ignore this part and we take the limit as n approaches infinity of n over 10 to the nth power. And we know that that is 0, OK, by the dominance of the lead term. So our next thing is, is it decreasing? And so to do that, remember what we said is that a n plus 1 had to be less than a of n, correct? So to check that part out, what we need to do is we can say n plus 1 over 10 to the n plus 1 has to be less than n over 10 to the n. OK? Now, once again, we're going to cross multiply. A lot of you were having problems with this earlier today, but the less than sign stays the sh same. And I multiply from left, top left, bottom right. So that becomes 10 to the nth times n plus 1, and we want to make sure that less than sign did not change. Actually, it's less than or equal to. That less than sign didn't change, and then I'm going to go uh, bottom, left, top, right. So then n times 10 to the uh, n plus 1. Now, is this smaller? Well, of course, because this is, let's say n is 3. This is 10 to the third times 10 to the fourth. So of course, this is smaller than this. So since both conditions are met, we say that this converges. The limit is 0, and a sub n plus 1 is less than a sub n. OK? 
Let's do the second one. Once again, this is causing it to alternate. So we ignore this part. We just ignore it. it. This part just lets us use this rule. And the first thing we want to do is take the limit as n approaches infinity of n squared over n cubed plus 4. And when I take that limit, I get 0. Okay, so the first part of the condition is met. Now let's do the second part. So I'm going to have, I have to add 1 to all my n. So I have n plus 1 squared over n plus 1 cubed plus 4. And I want to know if that's less than or equal to n squared over n cubed plus 4. Okay? So I have n plus 1 squared. And again, I'm multiplying left the bottom right, n plus 1 squared times n cubed plus 4. And I want to know if that is less than or equal to, cross multiplying again, I get n squared times n plus 1 cubed plus 4. Now, if I look at this, the highest, and I remember I'm, I'm, I'm going towards infinity. So the highest exponent here would be n squared times n cubed, which is n to the fifth. And I'm comparing that to n squared times n squared. So I'm comparing that to n to the fourth. And I know there's other things going on here, but ultimately the n to the fifth will dictate um, how big it is. So as we go towards infinity, this is bigger than that. So both rules apply, and I can say that this converges. Okay? The next one, once again, it's alternating. So because it's alternating, I can use the alternating series test, which means I have to take the limit as n approaches infinity of 3n minus 1 over 2n plus 1. And when I take that limit, what do I get? I get 3 halves. Because the limit was not 0, this diverges. All righty. Let's do the last three. Actually, I was supposed to rearrange this, and I didn't do that. Oh, I can pause this. Okay, so welcome back. I'm sorry, I just paused this so, to get the other ones out of the way. Okay, so once again, is this alternating? Well, will cosine n pi alternate? Well, think about it like this. I have cosine of um, pi. So cosine of pi is negative uh, 1. And then I have cosine of, when n is 2, I have cosine of 2 pi, which is 2. So this, I'm um, oh, sorry, which is um, positive 1. So we can see that this is going to alternate because cosine of 3 pi is negative 1 and cosine of 4 pi is positive 1. So cosine n pi makes this alternate. And because this is making it alternate, then I only look at 1 over n to the 3 fourths. Well, I don't really need to do anything else with this because I already know 1 over n to the 3 fourths converges. Uh, because it's an alternating p-series. So, but can I use the alternating series test, I guess is the answer. Well, we know the limit as n approaches infinity is 0. And so setting up our limit, we have 1 over n plus 1 to the 3 fourths. Is that less than or equal to 1 over n to the 3 fourths? And we can pretty much tell that it is, but we can do n to the 3 fourths is less than n plus 1 to the 3 fourths. And we, can, we know that that is. So this converges by the alternating series test. Okay? The next one. Now, we don't have a nice little formula for it, but we can see that it's alternating. So we have positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. 
we can also see without doing this rule that each term is getting smaller. Because we know that this estimates to about a half, so 0.5. Uh, 4 ninths is about 0.44 repeating. 4 tenths is like 0.4. So we see that each term is getting smaller and smaller. So it has satisfied both conditions, so this converges. And of course, the limit as this goes to infinity is, is 0. This is also, uh, uh, it's not. OK, so the next one is. Um, alternating. So our first thing is to take the limit as n approaches infinity of n to the nth over n factorial. Now, one of the things that we already know is that n to the nth grows faster than other functions. So it, since n to the nth grows faster than n factorial, then we know that this diverges. And that's really it for that. So I want you to watch video two, which will talk about absolute and conditional convergence. Okay? Have a great day.